Hey guys, welcome back for another Trick Tip Tuesday. And today's tip, I'm gonna talk about um, how to join uh, two pieces of material, um, whether it be round tubing, square tubing, that sort of thing. Um, you know, when you're, say, building a chassis, a roll cage, those types of things. Um, obviously, roll cage stuff can, you know, it's not something you usually join two pieces together, you know, in a straight line. Uh, <clears throat> just because of usually regulation stuff, they want uh, tubes to be one piece, that sort of thing. Um, I've been working on this tubing project uh, on my car, and because I'm building this chassis, obviously it's the full chassis, there's a lot of bends, complex shapes, that sort of thing. So sometimes, uh, you know, joining the two pieces together uh, obviously allows you to be able to build the parts separately uh, and be able to put everything uh, together in a way that uh, obviously completes your project and uh, will still have the strength required uh, for the parts. So, um, so to explain to you guys uh, kind of some baselines that I use when I'm joining uh, parts. So uh, if I've got you know two tubes that I'm putting together that I need to be in line, um, obviously if I was to just put these together and weld that seam up, uh, it's only as strong as that weld's going to be at that seam, which can be fairly strong, but when you start talking about the uh, the pressure and the amount of force that is involved in a car chassis and obviously going down the road, uh, that sort of thing, uh, you know, there's you're putting a lot of faith in just that one little weld. So uh, the process obviously is to add a slug um, inside of the tubing. Now, this can be, this type of thing can be used on square tubing as well. Usually what you do um, is you just insert some flat plate inside the flat sides of the tube and slide it over. So a slug in a round tube, uh, this is inch and a half, uh, 120 wall tubing. Um, so basically the inside diameter is uh, basically just a hair bigger than inch and a quarter. So I have some inch and a quarter uh, DOM tubing here that I use as a slug so that gets slid inside. Now, um, kind of a rule of thumb that I like to use as far as, um, you know, making the slug, like how long does the slug have to be, that sort of thing. I usually just like to go two times the diameter of the material that I'm sliding it into. So this is inch and a half. So I made, I cut this slug at three inches. So it's twice the diameter of the tube. So we get that cut to that, you can slide it in there. And then you have about that inch and a half hanging out that then you are able to, uh, you know, slide your other tube through. So the other part of adding a slug is drilling a hole, uh, drilling multiple holes in your uh, base material that you can then plug weld uh, into the slug. And actually, so that helps create the extra strength is attaching the slug to your base material um, in a way that's gonna add strength to the joint and keep it all together, make sure that it's uh, strong, uh, as strong or stronger than what the original um, material would have been. So um, usually how I like to do this is to actually clock and rotate the, the drilled holes. So um, with this, so in this one, uh, if I was lining these up, I drilled a hole on the top and the bottom of this side, but it's on, I'm on the sides of the other side. So I'll be plug welding here and here and then here and here. Um, I just like to do that because it's your, I don't know, it's putting the plug welds in a little bit different orientation, maybe adding some different uh, strength uh, that way. So um, just something I like to do. So like I said, uh, I'm cutting that slug inside of here is going to be three inches. So it's going to be about that long as opposed to um, you know if you were to make this real short yeah you could still achieve some extra strength but um, when you make that longer it adds a lot more strength to that part that way and then you get that welded uh, in your plug welds and then the other thing the last thing I do before I put these together is actually to uh, bevel the edges of this tube uh, that I'm putting together so that way um, I can really make sure that I'm able to penetrate down and actually weld into that slug material on the inside uh, and then get that all attached that way. So um, like I said, all this can be used on square tubing as well. So if you're putting together some pieces of square tubing, let's say you're doing uh, two by two square tubing, uh, you can cut some flat plates and uh, 
plug weld, you know, drill some plug weld holes on your one side, slide your flat plates in on all four sides. Uh, you know, make sure you're covering a distance, uh, you know, that's gonna be wider than your joint or the, than the diameter of the material that you're joining together. And then, you know, plug weld those all the way around, get your butt weld seam welded up. Uh, and that's really gonna add a lot of strength uh, to your material. So, um, you know, if you're doing, let's say you're doing a two inch by four inch uh, squared, you know, rectangle tube, uh, you know, for frame rail sections, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, I, I actually would at that point make the plates a little bit longer and really uh, extend out the distance there uh, on the plates on the inside of that to just help add strength to the overall part. So um, just some tips on um, slugging the inside of some material to be able to butt weld uh, and have a nice seam uh, between your parts and uh, be able to make sure that they're strong uh, for your end product. So. Uh, hopefully these tips help you out in your shop and uh, send us your ideas for Trick Tip Tuesday to tips at tricktools.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.